really nice working in the Adelaide Botanic Gardens. The herbarium is based on one end of it and the university is on the other. So whenever I need to go from one of my offices to the other, I have to walk through the Botanic Gardens. I'm Dr Andrew Thornhill. I'm a research botanist at the State Herbarium of South Australia and the University of Adelaide. I do a lot of different things as part of my job. I'm a curator of the bryophytes at the moment, so that means I look after all the collections of the mosses and liverworts and hornworts that are in the State Herbarium. I also do a bit of teaching at the university where I lecture in plant ID and teach future students how to identify plants. And then I do different kinds of research. I first thought I'd be a botanist in 1995. So I enrolled to go to university and a week before I was about to go to university, I found out that I had cancer. I was 18 when that happened. It was a type of cancer that was in my knee. It was a bone cancer. And so I had two options. They either were gonna amputate my leg or they gave me a knee replacement. So I chose the knee replacement and it was the first of its operation in the world, but it meant that I couldn't run anymore and I had to take care of my leg. It also doesn't help that I was in a car accident five years after the chemo and broke both my legs and every bone in my foot, so I had to recover again. I decided that instead of being a zoologist, which I thought I might be, it was too hard to chase animals, that I'd become a botanist because it was way easier to collect plants. You didn't have to run after them. They'd just come up to you. Well, you go up to them. When they made me the moss curator, it was kind of ironic because you've got to get down on your hands and knees and I don't have one of the knees to get down on. And so I get a camera or, or magnifying glass or something and bend down without having to get down on my knees or I just get down on my stomach and look really closely. We're in a section of Adelaide Botanic Gardens, which is a southeast Australian forest section. This is First Creek and it runs out into the Torrens. And this little area is a patch of, of the garden where moss grows everywhere, as well as liverworts and also hornworts. So this spot's good because it's wet and it's constantly wet and it's kind of shady. It means that it stays wet the mosses can survive, they don't dry out when it gets really hot, especially in the Adelaide summers. And when they do actually die out, they sit there and they don't completely die. So when it rains, they can pop up really quickly and show themselves again. Right in front of me, I can see that this is a fern moss. This is Dewey Deopsis sparsa. This is a moss that's common to Southeast Australia. On the ledge here, I can see Maybe a little bit of centricia growing here, which is another common moss, especially on rock ledges. And then there's Chyloscyphus, which is a type of leafy liverwort that grows on logs and also on rocks. And it slowly disintegrates logs and also rocks, turning it into soil and decomposes it so that plants can use it. Mosses and their close relatives, liverworts and hornworts, are what we think are the earliest land plant groups. They're the plants that came out of the water and started colonising land and forming oxygen. The mosses form part of the ecosystem in that you might not see them, but they're sitting there underneath the soil holding it together in many places. And it's only when it rains that they pop up really quickly and unfurl their leaves and put their little chlorophyll out and turn green. And then you'll spot them everywhere. I'm an environmental biology student at the University of Adelaide. I've been involved at the Herbarium as a volunteer for the last few years, working with the Bryophyte collection. Andrew has a really relaxed way of going about things, you know, cracking jokes and making people feel comfortable, I think. There's some racopillum mixed in with it, and then there's this one that I'm, I haven't seen around Adelaide before, so it might have come in with the rocks. Mosses and liverworts and, and hornworts also do something completely different to all other land plant groups in that their stage of life, or their main stage of life, is only a single chromosome stage of life. It's when they grow those little sporophytes that they have the two sets of chromosomes. In every other land plant group, it's complete opposite. So when you look at a tree or a flower or anything else in the land plant group, it has two sets of chromosomes. And we think that happened maybe 400 million years ago. When I arrived here three years ago, we had all these collections of envelopes, but we didn't know what we had. So we set upon taking pictures of every one of these envelopes 
and putting it online so digital scientists could transcribe the information from the envelope into the fields that we wanted so that we could then form a database so that we can now know what we have in the collection. These samples are dried just like every other plant specimen in the herbarium collection is dried so that they can preserve, they can be pressed and then they can last for maybe a couple hundred years or more if we're lucky. We don't want fresh material because they turn mouldy and they rot away. So we pluck the moss or liverworts out of the ground, put them in tissue paper and carefully press them and get all the moisture out of them. Then we put them in a freezer so that gets rid of any pests that might be in there that might eat them. And then we store them in envelopes and store them by their genus name in the collection. In Queensland. Since doing the databasing, we've then expanded to try and do outreach programs such as trivia nights and art exhibitions. This all began thanks to Jules Schiller from ABC Radio, who started the Adelaide Moss Appreciation Group on Facebook. From that, we then tried to do a World Moss Day last year. The Nature Festival in South Australia got a hold of it, and this year requested that we do a trivia night, which we're calling Moss to Mine. And they also requested that we do an art exhibition on moss. So I can't draw, but my partner can. And her name's Annie, but she wants to remain anonymous. So we're calling the art exhibit Ananamoss. Mosses are, are doing a job. They're sitting there extracting nutrients or holding soil together. They might be slowly breaking something down. So without them, we wouldn't have some of the soil that other plants can use. 